Welcome to another Wiggly World show and we're going to show you how to look after a giant African land snail because I think these make the best pets. Um, they're particularly good for nurseries and preschools or young children. As you can see, they're very sociable. They can be held and I absolutely love snails. Um, they're so fascinating to watch. Because these snails are so big, you can even hear them he eat as well. They love to eat any leftovers that you've got. So if you've got carrot peelings, um, sweet potato peelings, um, lettuce, um, anything that's going a little bit green and moldy in the fridge, um, peppers, um, it's basically lots, but don't give them anything from the onion family. So garlic and onion is out um, because they can contain um, chemicals that aren't great for slugs and snails, which is why you plant them next to your plants that you don't want to get eaten. And um, also um, make sure that you give everything a thorough wash and it's best to use organic um, leftovers because then you know that there's no um, pesticides that have been on them. This giant African land snail is an albino, um, as you can see because he's got very, very beautiful pale skin. And you count how old they are by the number of whirls. So you only count the big whirls really. So this one is just coming up for three and a half. Um, if you want to do some experiments with your snail, you can do. So if you feed them nothing but red peppers or beetroot or something, you'll notice that the bands that they grow in their shell will be that color. So you can experiment and make yourself a multicolored snail. I know this one doesn't look the biggest, but this is the biggest species. Um, these ones grow up to 30 centimeters big. This is um, a tiger snail. And um, these ones have these banded stripes in their shell. And as you can see, their skin is very, very dark. With all the snails, these bits are their eyes. They're not very good at seeing, so they can only really see light and dark. Um, so when you do have them in the tank, make sure they've got lots of places to hide because they'll like to move around a bit, um, particularly at night. So these ones require a bit more care. These require more heat. So a uh, heat mat under one side of the tank, um, or in my case, I keep them in with a gecko so they keep pretty, pretty warm and snug there. Um, but even so, I still find that these ones hibernate over winter. If you do lift up your snail and find that it's got that clear um, kind of case on the, on the opening, don't panic. It's just gone into hibernation because the conditions aren't right. So either it's not damp enough, they're not getting enough food, um, or maybe it's too cold. If you want to revive them and you know you're going to keep the conditions right from now on, then just put them in some lukewarm water, um, like a little bath, and uh, keep an eye on them so they don't drown. And um, if you don't want to, then they can safely hibernate um, for as long as the conditions are that, are that way. So you can keep them in a plant propagator like this, but just make sure that you seal up the holes um, in case you do have babies. And this is some um, coir that you just need to rehydrate by soaking in water, which is, makes a really, really good substrate. I had problems with the plant propagator. I had um, some problems with mites getting into my snails and killed them. Um, so this type lid is much better because it does let out a bit of water so it's not such a high humidity which is great for the mites and the snails but unfortunately you don't want any mites in there. This giant African land snail is called a pink lipped um, African land snail so it's an another one more of the pretty ones and with all the snails you might find that they breed quite readily and um, you'll notice this they might have something sticking out of the side of their head um, that contains the um, sperm and they'll shoot those darts at each other um, if you do notice the mating um, or even if you've got a couple of snails of the same type then do have a check every so often in the soil um, because they will bury their eggs in there and you will be very wrong with snails. If you don't want to breed the snails, the best thing to do with their eggs is to freeze them. It's a humane way of killing them. Or they make very good food for newts or fish. Um, or even some people um, cook them for humans. So they can be used as caviar for humans. Um, obviously, that's up to you what you want to do with your snail eggs. 
Thank you for joining us and I hope that you will come back next week when we're going to look at a different animal.